There we go. A bit of housekeeping before I begin the lesson, even though nobody ever watches this. Um, I have a grant or a gift of a few hundred dollars so I can improve the sound on these. Um, I have a Windows laptop that I can use, or I can continue using Android. If you know of anything, a program on Windows that would work um, with YouTube or something within YouTube where I can um, control, let me know. I have a very good recording headset that I can use within the laptop. And I have used that for recording um, speeches and for recording music previously when I was doing another job. Um, so let me know if you know of a program that would work within YouTube and would cross match the voice into YouTube. On to the lesson. The lesson is called Faith Carries Us Through. Habakkuk is the only prophet to devote his entire work to the question of the justice of God's government in the world. In the Bible as a whole, only Job delivers a more pointed challenge to divine rule. Our first reading, we have Habakkuk's challenge, which is set up as a dialogue between the prophet and God, in which Habakkuk's opening complaint about injustices in Judean society, 1, 2 to 4, is followed by a divine response assuring the prophet of the reliability of God's rule and calling for human faithfulness, 2, 2 to 4. Important events which frame Habakkuk's prophecy, the great Babylonian Chaldean victory over the Egyptians at Carchemish, 605 BC, and the second Babylonian invasion of Judah, 587 BC, which ended with the destruction of Jerusalem. The desperate conditions in Judah during these years arising from internal and external threats provoked Habakkuk's struggle with difficult and important theological questions about divine justice. Habakkuk's faith in God carried him through seeing the destruction of the holy city and helped him maintain his holy gift of sight so that his voice could sustain others throughout the millennia. Our second reading is our first introduction to Paul's second letter to Timothy. We have thoroughly read and studied the first letter and know well its tone and content of encouragement, exhortations, and then the instructions in the event that Paul is delayed for their joint meeting with the Ephesians. The tone of the second letter is much more personal and addresses Timothy in more vivid terms, depicting Paul's courage and hope in the face of discouragements late in the course of his apostolic ministry. The letter takes on the character of a final missive and testament from Paul to his younger former student, Timothy, while Paul writes from his prison cell in Rome. The snippet of today's letter recalls to Timothy of the time when he was converted to Christianity and received the grace of God through Paul's laying on of hands, and from that time became Paul's student of ministry to eventually receive his current ecclesiastical office. The faith of Paul was tested often, but never failed. And with Paul's example for Timothy, Paul's image carried forever in his mind, eye, and heart of the greatest student and friend. Paul's words echoing through the miles for Timothy himself to serve as the image for the people of Ephesus, to be their Paul, to be their teacher, to show them what living by the faith of Christ meant, strengthened by Timothy, even as Paul aged and neared death. For neither was faith ever weakened by their trials, but it made brighter and stronger the grace of God strengthened like a muscle when it is tested and exercised. Our gospel has the story of faith being the size of a mustard seed, one of the smallest seeds there is that grows of a tree that is mighty and strong and lives for years. Quote, if you had the faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. From Matthew 17.20 If you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing will be impossible from you. From Mark 11.23 
Amen, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart but believes that what he says, says will happen, it shall be done for him. All of these stories are about the size of your faith and what, you can, what can be done with it. Paul changed the world for years from inside a prison cell because of his faith was so strong and large, and he planted small dust-sized seeds of faith all over Greece, northern Africa, and Asia, Asia in the time of his ministry. Timothy built upon that work, tending to those dust-sized seeds in Ephesus and in the Hellenistic areas. Habakkuk built upon his faith, keeping the word alive by writing and speaking. He never experienced a Christ, but he believed that one would come. So where is your faith? How large is your faith? What can you do with your faith? If each person listening, reading, watching this did one faith act each day and then recruited another person each week to join this community and project, you will individually have changed your own world dramatically and to a substantial degree, but you would, as a group, have changed your communities. You would have moved a mountain within 26 weeks. And within 52 weeks, the group would have moved an entire mountain range to the other side of a continent. Think of what you can do. Work to reduce climate change and help the world recover on this weekend of St. Francis. Or work to stop hate and discrimination by assisting those who are victims of hate through the Anti-Defamation League or through the League of Women's Voters or what? Use your faith. I have in the past months given you many ideas and suggestions. Use your faith. Starting now. <laughs>